Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash is the latest, hottest, and wettest entry in the Senran Kagura series. Just a heads up to the new subscribers, if you have zero or less interest in a game that's aimed at perverts, I'm gonna give you about two seconds to click off. The Fatal Frame retrospective will begin Tuesday, and I hope to see you back for that. Are they gone? All right, for the rest of you deviants left around here, know that I love you guys, and let's get started. Yes, you heard me right, ladies and gentlemen. Our favorite busty brawlers are back, but this time around, it's a whole new format that I find too many people, even myself at times, have wrongfully compared to Splatoon. And before we get too far into this, I want to explain the Splatoon comparison and why I don't really think it fits, why I'm not going to use it. Aside from being able to launch single melee attacks completely devoid of combo chains, the entire old combat system has been ditched. Now we move into high octane water gun battles with our beautiful shinobi zipping around massive stages on foot and in the air, destroying each other's clothes with various water gun weaponry and special attacks. Just looking at footage, it's easy to see where one might make comparisons to Splatoon, running around firing liquid at your opponents and zipping to and fro with impressive speed, but ultimately the meta of each game is radically different. With Splatoon, the whole point of the game is really to just cover the bulk of the stage with your own party's paint. Getting a kill is meant to only slow down the enemy. In Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash, there is no such mechanic. What you have is basically a team deathmatch game using water guns instead of standard weapons. The first to X amount of kills or the party to get the most kills within the time limit wins the match. Given the completely different meta of the games, we're really only left with the water and ink in place of bullets as our last comparison between the two. The ink in Splatoon serves a purpose to the game's meta and brings about new mechanics such as being able to use the ink to hide, traverse the arena, or access new areas. In Senran Kagura, the water serves no extra purpose and as such is little more than an aesthetic difference when compared to mainstream shooters. Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash is much more akin to team deathmatch modes in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare than it is to Splatoon. But that's just my two cents on something that ultimately doesn't matter in the scope of this review. At the onset of the game, our beauties arrive on a secluded island where they are met by two characters in disguise. It's really obvious to the girls and the player who these two really are, but they refuse to admit their identity, and honestly, I'm really glad about it. These two here are very reminiscent of Pokemon's Team Rocket and provide great comedic relief. They tell the girls of a competition happening on this island called Peach Beach Splash. As you guessed, this is a water gun battle competition between all the different shinobi schools. Whoever wins is apparently granted a wish of anything they desire. Despite this competition being streamed live in its entirety on the video sharing platform NewTube, each school of shinobi becomes curious and interested in doing the competition for their own varying reasons. They decide to stay on the island and the games begin. However, something nefarious seems to be going on in the background of all things, and suspicions arise about the purpose of the competition. A very simple premise to start things off, and I'm not going to say much more about the main story outside of that. Honestly, there really isn't much more to the main story outside of that. But in typical Senran Kagura fashion, the narrative becomes more about the rivalries between our individual shinobi characters than it is about the overarching story that binds it all together. And just how many characters are there? Not counting DLC characters, we have around 30 at our disposal. Most are available right off the bat, but a few will drop in during the late game stages. Once you finish the tutorial, you can select which school you want to play through the game as. There's four schools here at the beginning, and each school has 10 missions for a total of 40. You can switch schools or start a new arc at any given time without losing progress on the one you were originally working through. Once the base 40 missions are beaten, you'll unlock a new story arc with 14 more missions, and when that's done, you unlock the final battle for a total of 55 main story missions. Most missions on medium difficulty can be completed between 30 seconds to 3.5 minutes. If we consider the average mission length as 2 minutes, this means our main story only actually has 110 minutes of gameplay, or 1 hour and 50 minutes. That said, you won't finish the game that fast unless you're skipping all of the story bits and visual novel segments, which should make the base game run closer to 8 or 12 hours, although I don't really have a good reference on how long this really takes. These visual novel segments are always fun and entertaining, but it's in this that I have my biggest problem with the game. Before I explain what my issue is, 
I want to say up front, this is a personal gripe. For most people, what I perceive as a negative here, you're going to see as a positive. The Senran Kagura games to me have always been a cut above just being simple and fun busty beauties brawling each other's clothes off. The Senran Kagura games have always had characters with real character and emotional backstories. As the games go on and the character rosters grow, the characters all get less screen time and smaller backstories, and the really emotionally intriguing background elements gradually taper off. In Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash, there is some reference to character histories that longtime fans will get, but no characters are truly expanded upon, and the histories are not reiterated. What this means is that the characters by and large completely lack character growth in this entry, and character growth is something I highly value. What this also means is that for new players, they can jump right in, start the story and just have a blast. It cuts all the fat and just makes this a great entry for new players to pick up and join in the series. While this game plays a lot like a spin-off, despite fitting plainly into the chronological narrative of the series, it is designed to expand the Senran Kagura fanbase, so this was honestly the best decision they could have made, but it unfortunately just means it's lacking something I highly value in my games. In addition to the main story, there is a numerous amount of side story content to do. Most will be unlocked from the get-go, with some others unlocking after reaching certain points in the main story. There is also something called the V-Road Challenge, which is essentially a single-player tournament mode. The tournament mode has four cups. Each cup has five matches, and each match is a timed team deathmatch. The story mode in the game overall I found very easy on medium difficulty, with the exception of the final boss, which actually slayed me more than I'd like to admit. But the V-Road Challenge? My god, the word challenge here is not picked liberally. This does get extremely hard. But this is where we lean on some old Senran Kagura tropes. We gotta make our characters OP, and yes, that can be done. Much like how going into frantic and performing a ninja art could lay instant waste to anybody in old Senran Kagura games, this time around we can use a card. But just saying you use a card doesn't make any sense yet, so let's back up a bit. Let's talk about loadouts and battle mechanics. Before battle, you can choose what weapon you want to use. There isn't a huge variety for guns, but they all play very different. You can only have one gun per match, but they also control your maneuverability. All the girls play basically the same, so treat your gun as your build rather than your character. Each weapon has a different rate of fire, reload speed, weight, and cost to use. Each weapon will use up a different amount of your water gauge per shot. This gauge is also used to power your jetpack and your combat slides. Recharging water can be done easily at any time at the press of a button. You don't even need to be next to a water supply to do it. Each weapon also has two types of fire to mix up gameplay a bit. Outside of the gun, you can also choose three pet cards and five character cards. Each of these do different attacks or provide different types of buffs and are loaded randomly into your hand three at a time. The character cards all range in degrees of rarity, and the really powerful ones are not easy to get. The more rare the card, the more powerful its effect. And it can be a lot more powerful than what you receive it at. Everything in this game can be leveled up. Your characters no longer level up on an XP system, but instead level up with the same resources as everything else. At the end of each match, you are given a pack of cards. What's in the card pack is decided by a heavy amount of RNG, how well you've done in battle, and what difficulty level you are playing on. If you get duplicates of cards, and you will get duplicates. They become resources for leveling your characters, your guns, your pet cards, and your character cards. The rarer the card, the more worth they have when leveling up. I recommend from the get-go to focus on leveling up your favorite guns and not your characters. The characters all use the same guns in their loadout, so a level 5 shotgun for Minori is a level 5 shotgun for everybody else. However, a level 5 Minori is not a transferable level to anybody else. Once your weapon is powered up, you'll likely have some rare cards. Find the strongest cards that work with your playstyle and level them up as much as possible. So long as you can bring a strong card and a strong gun into battle, you can one-shot almost anything. True, you can be one-shotted just as easily, but boosting your character's level won't help with this that much. So get OP and slay the V-Road challenge. That's it for basic gameplay, but what else is there? Cards and curios can be purchased at the store using money if you're so inclined. While in the store, make sure you give that touchpad a tap as well. Then head to the dressing room, get your characters out of the boring white skivvies they start in, and back into their own original costumes. Or whatever costumes you want. The dressing room is very versatile, but having all the characters in the same white bathing suits they default at is just a little bland. I like the old costumes, and it reintroduces breakable clothing. However, in battle, these costumes disappear, 
during finishers and the regular bathing suits reappear. Mess around in the intimacy mode if you want, then jump into the diorama mode and create the perfect waifu, or, or an abomination. The final thing to talk about here is the online mode. The online modes are great and a lot of fun. I, I suck at them, but they're fun. You can take your team deathmatch online or play through modes like Capture the Bra, where when you defeat an enemy, you take her bra and bring it back to the muster point. You can also set up to do some survival matches or story matches with a buddy. It's a hell of a lot of fun, but it's kind of a bit inactive. You can get a match, but a simple 3v3 lobby can take 5 or more minutes to fill, and a 5v5 takes longer than I want to bother with. Unfortunately, this online I don't think is going to last too long. There are DLC characters if you want to expand your experience, and there's a ton of costumes and cosmetics to buy, but a lot of these are just carried over from previous titles. Graphics are mostly fine, very clear, very crisp, nice colors, great stage designs, excellent resolution, and a pretty solid frame rate. Sound effects can use some work, and the soundtrack is mostly good. Voices, of course, are fantastic, and control is buttery smooth, as always. The camera can get a bit funny at times, and it's easy to clip through stage boundaries with it, and some NPC AI is absolutely terrible, but overall, nothing ever stops this game from being fun. While it lacks one of the biggest things I value in a game, and in this series, I do think this is an excellent game. It's amazing amounts of fun, it's not imposing in the slightest, and very friendly to new players of the series. There is a load of content for the price point, and if the online ever picks up, it's an absolutely easy purchase. It's not the world's best balanced game, but for online purposes, everybody has equal grounds to be equally OP, and that's kind of a method of balancing, isn't it? Anyway folks, that's all I'm gonna say on this. This review is a bit of a mess, I hope I didn't miss too much. If this helped at all, hit that like button if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button if you want to go the extra mile. By all means, share this. And remember, as a great man named Kenichiro Takaki once said, tits are life, ass is hometown. Thanks for watching. <laughs>